stick shifts, white letter tires, chrome speedometers, bucket style seats, candy colors, all wrapped in memories of cruising down Main Street on a summer Saturday morning. In the 1960s and early 70s, the two-wheel dream machine for many children in the US and Canada was a Schwinn Stingray, a bicycle that put the spirit, if not the power, of a Cheval SS396 at their feet. And somewhere between their childhood and middle age, a love of the muscle bike was rekindled. Introduced in the summer of 1963, the Schwinn Stingray emerged in Southern California, the same sun-kissed incubator that spawned hot rodding and drag racing. A savvy Schwinn vice president, Al Fritz, and a regional distributor for rival manufacturer Huffy, Peter Mole, saw an opportunity, having watched children customize their rides with aftermarket high-rise handlebars and banana seats. Though Mole was first to market with the Huffy Penguin, it was Schwinn Stingray, the name echoing that year's dramatic new Chevrolet Corvette model that would become synonymous with the muscle bike. Print adverts proclaimed the Stingray the bike with a sports car styling. Dan Schmitz was stung in 67. For his 10th birthday, he received a Stingray Fastback, a model with a lightened frame and narrow, road bike type tires. He posed it in front of his father's 67 Mercury Cougar for a black and white snapshot that still hangs on a wall in his home in St. Louis, Missouri. His Stingray Fastback, a special edition, sprouted twisting ram's horn handlebars. I remember seeing them come into the Schwinn shop. I thought it was the coolest bike ever, says Schmitz, who runs the printing business founded by his father. His Fastback also wore a defining feature of muscle bikes, a gear shifter mounted on the top tube. Schwinn called it the stick shift, presaging Detroit's affinity for misspelled muscle car options a lather Dodge Charger track pack. Schmitz, who would eventually graduate to Camaros and Corvettes, became nostalgic for the Stingray about 14 years ago. He found an original Ram's Horn Fastback, starting a collection that would eventually number 125 models. He has since culled that to 75, mostly Fastbacks, and all but two are unrestored originals. The entire lower level of his house is dedicated to showcasing them. In 1968, with the Detroit Muscle Car Race at full throttle, Schwinn issued the Hemi of Stingrays, the crate. A 16 inches front wheel on a Springer fork, 20 inches rear wheel with a wide slick tire and a chrome sissy bar mounted on shock absorbers gave the crate the stance of a top fuel dragster. Just to ensure no one missed the point. Adverts depicted the bike on a drag strip. The only thing muscle about the crate, though, was the effort it took a child to motivate its 50 pounds, 23 kilograms, mass. The price tag was hefty, too, with the five-speed models starting at $90 in the US, or roughly $600 in contemporary dollars. Most kids preferred the bright-hued versions, the orange crate, apple crate lemon peeler and pea picker. Schwinn was also tone deaf enough to offer a white model called the cotton picker. Rich Msenro, a 52-year-old father of four, was nine when his father brought home a slightly used 1971 orange crate to ride around the New York suburb of West Orange, New Jersey. His father, an inveterate collector of everything from Native American artifacts to a 1967 Pontiac GTO eventually stored the crate in his basement, where it remained until 2014, when Msenro, a systems analyst for insurance conglomerate Munich Re, retrieved it. Msenro's orange crate still wears its original paint and tires, though its owner notes it could benefit from a few upgrades. Via an enthusiast website, he learned of a method to gently remove the oxidation that had encrusted the bike's chrome over four decades using nothing more sophisticated than aluminium foil and water. The cleanup revealed evidence of the bike's abuse at his boyhood hands. I could see nicks and scratches from where I dropped it instead of using the kickstand, Msenro says. An original orange crate could be worth $1,400, according to Stephen Comerinitz, a Stingray collector in Uncassville, Connecticut. 12 when his parents bought him a 1968 apple crate, 
Comrinitz now owns eight original crates, including a rare 1971 Grey Ghost. That's a $4,000 bike if you find an original, says Comrinitz, an entrepreneur who builds electric motors for kayaks. He sold his hot rodded Plymouth and started collecting bikes four years ago. His collection stands at about 30, and he occasionally rides them in the summer. I look at eBay first thing in the morning and last thing at night, he says. The bidding gets crazy, especially for the crates. In San Francisco, 56-year-old Dave Mariano conveys his bike preference with his screen name in the Schwinn online community, Crate Mayhem. He has about 20 vintage bicycles, including several Iverson muscle bikes designed by famed car customizer George Barris. Mariano rides most of them, usually with his club, the Frisco Bay Stingrays, a group of 20 enthusiasts. We ride around, get lunch and have a good time, says Mariano. Everybody looks at our bikes and talks to us. It's nostalgia. And it's great exercise, too. Mariano never had a stingray as a boy. A lot of parents couldn't afford them, he says. You might be lucky to get one from a police auction. Or, your parents might have bought you one of the many competitors' bikes, such as Huffy's Post Penguin Dragster, Rail or Slingshot, a Roll Fast Scoot, Sears Screamer, or, from Britain, the Rawley Chopper. John Pascuzzi doesn't remember the brand of the Stingray knockoff he rode as a kid growing up in Northern California. But the musician, who now lives in Southern California, does recall that when he was 11, a neighborhood boy got a 1970 Schwimpy picker. I rode it once or twice, Pascuzzi says. By serendipitous circumstance, he now owns that bike. Years after he had moved out of his parents' house. His younger brother inherited the well-worn crate from the neighbor. But it sat under a tarp for 30 years until Pascuzzi took it home in 2012. I'm a little handy but had never restored a bike, Pascuzzi, co-inventor of a melodic steel instrument called the harpy drum, says. He found ample support in the online Stingray community, sourcing a recovered seat and other pieces from Peter Ronson whose high-performance company in Arizona supplies Schwinn Stingray and crate parts. New fenders, the front tire and hand grips came from one of the Chinese-built Schwinn crate models.